This video was sponsored by Brilliant. I have a discount for you to try them out at the end of the video, so stick around. Hey, happy Friday. This week Huawei announced the Mate 40 series, which will likely be its last flagship phone series for a very long time, maybe years. Vivo decided to enter the European smartphone market and Quibi, the billion dollar video streaming app, went out of business. As always, we also have a brand new tech knowledge quiz, so if you like testing your knowledge, it is linked down in the description and welcome to the Friday Checkout. Okay, my pick of the week will be a lot of mixed feelings I got from Huawei's big Mate 40 announcement event yesterday, where they released three new phones, a 700 euro smartwatch and some audio gear, including the FreeBuds Studio headphones. First of all, FreeBuds Studio, that is the best name they could come up with. Like these are not earbuds, so FreeBuds just feels kind of off. But also Apple is just about to release their long rumored AirPods Studios, so this name seems rather silly. But more important are the actual phones, of course, which might be Huawei's last flagship phones for a very long while. The hardware looks pretty much exactly in line with what you would expect from a new flagship. An impressive looking 90Hz screen, big camera upgrades, 66 watt charging just to beat OnePlus by one watt, I guess. And most importantly, the phone comes with Huawei's brand new 5 nanometer Kirin 9000 chip. And that's where the fun kind of ends. The Kirin 9000 is the last flagship chip Huawei was able to build from its manufacturer TSMC before the ban. And according to analysts, despite ordering 15 million units, they only managed to get 8.8 .8 million pieces before the ban kicked in. That means that unless something major changes, Huawei cannot make more than 8.8 .8 million Mate 40 phones. Given that the Mate 30 series sold 12 million units in its first two to three months on the market, if the Mate 40 is to sell anywhere near as well, they'd be out of stock in a month and a half, which is pretty brutal. I haven't seen any good data on how many stockpiles Huawei has for the P40 series, but given that Huawei's only remaining major manufacturing partner for chips, SMIC, is apparently years away from being able to manufacture high quality flagship processors, the company might be out of flagship phones in just a couple of months. And that's a really scary place to be for Huawei because they're on a death spiral basically. Without overwhelmingly attractive hardware, very few customers will buy their phones and once sales start dropping, developers will get cold feet and won't port their apps to the Huawei App Store and HMS and the death spiral continues. Up until now, Huawei used the enormous momentum that it had with hardware to keep selling phones to users and that in return attracted developers, but if the momentum with hardware stops, I don't expect good things. Okay, the win of the week will be Chinese phone giant Vivo coming to Europe, starting with their upper mid-range X51 model, three mid-range Y series phones and two wireless earbuds. The prices seem, uh, I don't know, kind of high. I mean, 800 euros for the X51 with a Snapdragon 765 seems especially steep, but that's just how Vivo rolls everywhere, I guess. They have announced entry into six markets, which are just the usual suspects of France, Germany, Spain, Italy, Poland, and the UK, and they have already started selling in a few of them. Funnily enough, Vivo is the fourth brand to enter Europe from the BBK parent company, so the first one would be OnePlus, then Oppo, then Realme, and now finally Vivo, so I guess the only one that is remaining would be IQ, IQ, I don't know how to pronounce them, but anyway, they're the last one that is still not in Europe. If you didn't know, Vivo used to be kind of the little brother of Oppo that followed everything Oppo did, just with a slight delay, but they absolutely wiped the floor with Oppo in India in terms of market share, and they have generally been catching up pretty much everywhere. And I see two major reasons for why Vivo would want to enter Europe now. One, India is becoming rather hostile towards Chinese phone brands, so I guess they want to diversify geographically in case that doesn't go very well for them, it's their major market. And two, I guess Huawei kind of crumbling away in Europe opens up a pretty big gaping hole that all of these smartphone brands are very eager to fill. Xiaomi and Oppo are already in the top five in Europe and Realme is growing quickly too. So if Vivo starts pushing hard here, they will collectively surely eat up whatever market share Huawei is about to lose. And my fail of the week will be the death of Quibi, the mobile first video streaming platform that has collected over a billion dollars in funding even before its launch and then quickly after its launch actually went out of business. Here is a really long list of all the investors, which includes a bunch of financial institutions like Goldman Sachs, tech companies like Alibaba and Google, and tons of media companies like Fox, Time Warner, Sony, MGM, and more. 
And I don't want to dunk on Quibi too hard because I know that building a startup is very difficult. But just for a comparison, I guess, Nebula, our very own video streaming platform, has just announced this week that we have reached 150,000 paying subscribers, which I think is more than Quibi ever had, even though we have received zero dollars in investment. So just some food for thought there. Anyway, Quibi had many problems, including just bad luck for being a mobile-only platform when everyone is stuck at home, but also a weird content catalog and bad design decisions like not allowing the sharing of any kind, including screenshots, so no shows could go viral. I actually feel like there's kind of a parallel between the story of Quibi and that of Essential in the sense that both had superstar famous founders and executives that in the case of Quibi were previous executives at Disney, for example, and they probably knew all the people in the industry and they got them all on board and to give them billions of dollars in cash before the actual ideas were really validated by the market. And I guess in the case of either of these companies, it just didn't go very well. Anyway, I know it's really easy pointing fingers at a failed startup and analyzing it after it has failed, that it's much more difficult to be smart about it when you are building something yourself. But if being smart is something that you really like, then I recommend checking out the fantastic courses over at Brilliant. Brilliant is like a gym for your brain, except this gym consists of beautifully crafted interactive puzzles and quizzes, each of which teaches you something new. For techies, the computer science learning path is especially fun as it lets you start with the foundations of computer science, including teaching you how algorithms and data structures work, as well as introducing you to programming using Python, and then moves on to concrete use cases, like letting you learn how to build a search engine by teaching you about crawling, indexing, optimizing results, and loading speeds and whatnot. There are in-depth courses about cryptocurrencies and quantum computing, and my favorite one is the one on computer memory, which teaches you how both the hardware of computer memory works, as well as how software and programmers can access and optimize it. So if understanding how that RAM stick or the CPU cache in your computer actually works sounds interesting to you, and you want to learn about it by solving thoughtful exercises instead of reading an encyclopedia, then head over to Brilliant. There is a free plan for you to try it out, but the first 200 people to sign up for premium using brilliant.org slash TFC, which I have of course also linked down in the description, will get 20% off their annual subscription. So check it out, happy learning, and I'll see you next Friday.